Hello, this is Dr. Davis again, and today I'd like to talk about a second brain that we all have that resides in our intestines. You would think that one brain would be enough, but we actually have two brains, a big one at the top of the spinal cord and a large, powerful brain in the gut called the enteric nervous system. Anyone that has given a speech and experienced a predictable performance-related stomach distress knows that your gut is listening closely to your brain. But what can the brain learn from the stomach? As it turns out, plenty. You see, the brain and the gut, including the esophagus, the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and colon, are intimately connected by the huge vagus nerve in a two-way street. Scientists were recently shocked to learn that instead of sending a majority of information from brain to gut, about 90% of the vagus neurons carry information from the gut to the brain. In fact, a new successful treatment for depression is vagal nerve stimulation, indicating that gut activity has a major effect on the brain's sense of well-being. This means that your general state of mind and your emotions are greatly affected by the health of your intestines. This can happen because there is a second brain in the gut so extensive, 500 million neurons, that any activity in the gut is a major influence on the brain. Many studies have shown that this constant exchange of electrical messages and chemicals are actually considered to be one entity and form the gut-brain axis. This is why ailments like irritable bowel syndrome, ulcers, Parkinson's, and depression have symptoms at both the gut and the brain level. Patients with anxiety and depression will have problems in the gut, and patients with heartburn and IBS will have changes in the brain. Unfortunately, drugs have been the first approach to controlling symptoms and have many side effects related to the gut-brain axis. Drugs used for depression, like SSRIs, increase the levels of serotonin in the brain, but because 95% of the serotonin in the body is found in the digestive tract, taking SSRIs can lead to GI problems such as nausea, constipation, or diarrhea, what some call mental illness of the second brain. Increased serotonin in the gut also has the surprising effect of increasing the incidence of osteoporosis. Thallium and sleeping pills affect the brain, but also depress gut function, leading to constipation, indigestion, and colon spasms. Almost every hormone or neurotransmitter the brain needs in order to function are also located in the gut and also affected by gut health, as are the major cells of the immune system, or GALT, the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. Even sleep is disturbed by poor communication between brain and gut. Most people know of the 90-minute cycles of REM sleep or dream sleep, but the gut also has 90-minute cycles of low-wave muscle contractions caused by the migrating motor complex, followed by short bursts of muscle movement. People with bowel problems like irritable bowel syndrome or Crohn's disease have abnormal REM sleep because of this relationship between REM sleep and gut contractions. Most people don't realize that the gut has such a significant role in the emotions and well-being. Unfortunately, because of this, digestive health is often overlooked as a major contributor to brain function and overall health. Many psychiatrists are now beginning to understand this relationship and seek the help of functional medicine experts to help direct their care. Testing gut function by measuring the levels and species of good bacteria can be very helpful along with looking for malabsorption, H. pylori or the bacteria that causes ulcers, possible parasites, and the most common irritant, gluten. These tests, along with information on the adrenal glands that evaluate problems with sleep and stress, can go a long way in formulating a plan to get back on track with both the first and the second brain.